Okay, guys, so I thought I'd do a video this morning on title animations. Um, I'm just going to do three of them and I'll put them up on a gist um, and I'll explain how it works a little bit. So what I've got here is I've got some dummy text so that I can scroll. So all this text is just for dummy scrolling. I've got my first title set here where I've got an upper title, a lower title, and I've got a divider in the middle. And I'll go out of the viewport and come back in and you'll see that it just fades in for different animations, they scale and fade as they come in. This is over a very long period, kind of like that movie title type uh, animation. So that's the first one that we're going to do. And it's very, very simple to do. Um, the next one I'm going to show you is this one here. And we're using the same kind of technique, but I've skewed the whole title. I've got a different timing, uh, with different timing function. So the top title and the bottom title is the same timing function. Top slides from the right, bottom slides from the left, and they've got a kind of a snap in effect at the end, just using a cubic bezier to do that. So that's the second one. The third one, and you can control all of this by variables, I should say. The third one is a 3D flip animation. So there we go there. So as I come into view, these flip. And they're all the same structure. It's just the CSS that changes for these. So these are the three that we're going to do today. So the zoom in, Zoom and fade in, slide in, and the 3D flip in. All right, so let's head over to the builder and have a look at the first one here. So the first thing I'm going to mention here is that uh, with the, uh, the first title here, you'll notice I'm using interactions. Now, the interactions I'm using is the interview port, and I want to add a or set an attribute of data in view. And then on the leave viewport, I want to remove that attribute. The reason I've done this is you could use the bricks start animation and pick an animation name and override it. Um, the problem I found with it is because I'm animating three elements in here uh, at different timing, what's happening is that when the first element finishes animation, it triggers the bricks JavaScript to remove the animation class and the uh, remaining animations just finished they just go to the end so it's um, not ideal so this is a better way of doing it so you got more control so basically adding an attribute of data and view and then removing that attribute when it leaves the viewport okay so that's what I'm doing with all of these uh, then I just set my uh, paddings here so I'm just going to put this full screen I'm just going to so you can see a little bit better and luckily I can do this because I've got advanced thema uh, and basically what we're doing is for our root block, which is the wrapper of that title, we're setting some uh, paddings here, and that's actually should be just padding, not padding in line now. Um, we're setting a row gap, uh, a animation duration of our full animation duration, a timing function as a default, I think. Oh, yes, I am using that. Uh, sorry, I've just been through this a few times. Uh, divider, so this is the actual divider we're using, the colors, the animation duration of that. Uh, the upper title, color, font size, font weight, text transform, letter spacing, and the duration. I'm just using the root duration here. I did that so that you can change that to whatever you want. Uh, and the lower title, same deal. Uh, but on then on the duration, I'm just adding four seconds. So I'm starting at four seconds with my top. The lower title is taking another four seconds. So it's a total of eight seconds for this particular animation. Okay. Uh, because I'm using a uh, what am I using? Just using a basic text, defaulting that to P. Uh, what I'm doing is making sure that we get rid of any margin bottom so we don't end up with extra spacing there. Uh, root, we set our display to flex column using our column gap variables, uh, row gap variable from up the top here, uh, and aligning our items to the center. Okay, that's vertically. So, sorry, uh, aligning to the center uh, horizontally. Okay. Uh, then on our upper title, we just set our properties based on those variables up there. Uh, now, from this point on, um, I actually put some comments on this, but basically this block here is your settings. Once you've set this block here, you really don't have to change anything unless you want to change the way things animate. The rest of this is actually just applying those settings to the actual elements. All right. So uh, what is our divider width? Uh, I've just set that here as a 100%. You could also put that up here as a setting up there. Um, the uh, divider line, so we're going to set the border top. So we're actually using a 
um, bricks actual divider here and that adds a wrapper around another div which it gives a class of line so we need to be aware of that and we need to target the the line to set the border top just to override what bricks is doing okay so then we just got our styling for our upper and upper and lower so it's the upper title our divider and our lower title that's just the styling of how it looks okay now we're going to look at how it animates now remember we looked at the uh, end of viewport it added the data in view attribute and when it leaves the viewport it removes the data in view attribute so we're going to use that to go when we've got the data in view attribute our upper title we want it to use this animation keyframes name over the animation duration with our animation timing function and all we're doing is saying scale from or opacity zero to one scale from 0.6 to one and that gives us that upper title scaling there all right and then on the uh da, 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 on the divider same deal we're just waiting for the data in view and we're calling uh title one divider keyframes and we're scaling that from zero to one and on the lower where's our lower is my lower there i can't see it title oh animations oh there we go i'm jumping jumping all over the place so both my upper and lower are doing the same kind of thing here the where they're different is the actual duration of our lower title animation is longer because we set that to four seconds plus our upper title animation duration okay and that's it that is the css that makes this entry animation work for this title here pretty cool right and you can change this to what you got oh you will notice also in here um i'm using uh, framework variables here which is my own sas framework that i use it's not something i'm publishing uh, i'm still working on it, just using it myself uh, you'll need to set your own variables here so you'll need to set these to either fixed variables or your own framework variables whether you're using core framework acss or your own you'll need to change those to get this to work uh, but this is my settings here all right all right let's move on to the second one which is the title two animation exactly the same thing for the data attributes uh, when we enter and leave the viewport that doesn't change the only thing that changes here is the css so what we're doing here is we're adding a root transform of skew y minus 10 degrees which i then put on my root uh, and, the, and because it's the the root is the title two here it's actually the whole div there that's going to be skewed okay the rest of it is pretty much the same except for uh, we're using a shorter animation so one second here uh, we're only adding another second so the total animation time is two seconds for the uh, lower title so the upper title will take one second to complete so will the uh, divider and then the lower title takes two seconds to complete because of that calculation there all right and then we put some styling around it like our background uh, uh our border radius we've added those as well so that we can get that uh you know that style around it okay so you can put whatever you like there it can be box shadows can be whatever you want to happen you can add some variables and put that in there all right so that is the um so the upper and the lower are basically using the same methodology uh just using different variables so we can control them separately all right animations all we're doing exactly the same as what we did with the previous one except for we give our keyframes a name of title two so we're calling the keyframes of our title two for our upper title and in this case we're just translating the x by 60 percent uh, 60 pixels and then back to none at 100 percent and on our lower title we're just going the opposite of minus 60 back to none all right same thing and then our divider uh we've left the same as we did with the previous animation so if the divider just scales from zero to 100 and the top and lower titles um, translate along the x-axis all right so that is that one next one is the uh, title three and again what we're doing here is if i bring that in we can see that little flip animation here happening on those two so what we did here is we changed a couple of things we added a root 
perspective variable. So on the perspective on the root, instead of putting a transform and, and skewing it, we've just put a perspective on there of 100 pixels, and that's kind of like how far away the camera is from the screen uh, for when you're doing 3D rotation. So when you have a perspective and then you rotate by the X, Y, and Z axis, it gives it a 3D appeal to it. Okay, so that's the change that we made there. The rest of this remains the same. We did shorten the animation duration to, the root animation duration to one second. Uh, and on the lower title, we only added half a second to that. Okay, we also, I did this on the previous one, I should say as well. We added the animation timing function as this cubic bezier, and that gives us a sort of a slide in and then snap in at the end uh, kind of effect. So that's the, if you look at these here, they sort of slide it and then snap. So that's slowly in and then snap. That's what the bezier is doing here, the cubic bezier. All right. The rest of it is the same, exactly the same as what we had on our previous one. Our animations, again, we have to update the animation name to in this case title three so we can do that differently and on this one all we're doing is telling it to do a 3d rotate uh, along the x y and x x y and z axis equally or 45 degrees uh, and then back to none at 100 percent and on the uh da -da -da -da, on this one here the lower title we're going minus 45 degrees and that was the effect that we had here so the Minus uh, so you can see they're rotating from different angles uh, and we've left the divider as it was we can just leave that as it is now what you can do here if, if you want this uh, right to say well, we, we do this it's uh, transparent then it comes in and it's coming in equally along that bezier if we want it to become in to be more opaque quickly what we'll do is we're going to add our upper title where is our 3D, 3333, three, three, three. so it's our lower. There is our upper. I'm going to add at, say, 20%. We're going to put our opacity to one. Just copy that. Do the same on this one here. Save that. Okay. I have some weird stuff happening with bricks where it's not updating these views. So I'm just going to get a new view of it. Okay. Now what we'll see is our last animation. See the opacity comes in quicker now. So it starts from a transparent, but the opacity is coming in quicker because we've put a, a uh, at 20%, we simply want the opacity to be one. Um, so that affects only the opacity at that point. So this is really, really simple to control once you've set them up. Uh, you can change your effects for your keyframes, for your animations, for your transforms, uh, your, your opacity, your timing. All that sort of stuff can be handled through standard CSS here. So even though that last one looks complex, once you've, done, once you've got the setup and you want to use this on your site, effectively from this point down, you don't have to worry about it. So that's our settings. That's our application of the settings, uh, and there's our animations. Uh, you don't need to worry about from this point downwards, all you have to do is change some variables here, unless you want to change the way that they animate. Okay, and you can change the settings in the actual keyframes for the animations. Uh, let's say, for example, what we're going to do is on our lower time, instead of minus 45, let's go from minus, let's instead, let's keep it in the same direction but we'll make it bigger. So let's make that uh, 60 degrees. I'd love to see what this looks like. Let's see what that looks like. Again, I'm, Bricks is not updating the view properly, so I'm going to just close that and refresh that. And we get down to our bottom animation. Now they're both flipping from the same direction, but one's, the lower one's flipping from a greater rotation than the bottom one. All right, really cool. So once you've got a set of maybe three or four of these, um, doing what you want to do, you can manipulate these really, really easily, um, and you've got a nice set of animations for titles. Okay, now I'm pretty exaggerated here. You may not do this as exaggerated that on your website. This is really just showing you that it actually uh, how it actually works. Well, right, I'm going to leave it here. If you like this kind of thing, hit the subscribe, hit the like. Thanks for listening, guys.